Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am Chell and today we're talking all about rosé. I've tasted through 30 different rosés over the last couple weeks to come up with my favorite rosés. I'm coming to you with 10 still, three sparkling, and a couple honorable mentions uh, that I wanted to just throw out there. All right, let's jump into number one. These are in no particular order, just how I threw them down on the list. So we're gonna start with our still wine. Number one is Channing Daughters Cabernet Sauvignon Rosado. This bottle retails for $22, and the adjective I gave this wine was local. I picked Channing Daughters because it's a local Long Island winery on the South Fork of Long Island. I've been there, they've always treated me really, really nicely, and I love their rosés. They make a ton of different ones. They also have great vermouths and orange wines and reds. It's a really great property if you ever go to visit. So Channing Daughters comes in a place on this list. The next bottle, number two, is Aix en Provence, AIX. I'm sure you've seen this. And the adjective I gave this wine was consistency. Every single year, Aix en Provence creates a fantastic rosé. I think it's a super traditional Provence-style rosé. It's also about 20 bucks, which makes it a pretty affordable bottle of wine uh, for the quality that you're getting. Number three on our list is called Bashta. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong, but it's a really cool pet nap from Slovenia. The adjective I gave this one was funky. It was so much like strawberry, raspberry, watermelon, slightly fizzy. It's made with natural wild yeast, so it's a Blau Frankish natural wine. I think it retailed for about $22, which I think is a really good price for a pet nap. You get really great value wines coming out of Eastern Europe, so I would definitely pick it up and give it a try if you're into natural wines or pet nap wines. The next rosé is from Germany. This one was introduced to me earlier in the year, and it's the Kruger Rum Spotburgunder Rosé. And Spotburgunder in Germany is Pinot Noir. So this is a Pinot Noir-based rosé. It has a beautiful, like, cherry color. It's really great, and it's super juicy. Like, you really get that strawberry cherry. And it's only about $14. The adjective I gave this wine was different, because I normally would never pick a rosé from Germany. When I think Germany, I think Riesling. I don't think rosé. Germany is amazing at growing Pinot Noir, so they've created a Pinot Noir rosé, and this one from Kruger Rumpf is A+. Next, we are traveling to the beautiful, sunny state of California. We are in Paso Robles. We are drinking Rabble Rosé wine. The adjective I gave this one was simple. And there is nothing wrong with having a simple wine. I just want to say that. Not every wine needs to be crazy and layered. And, you know, sometimes you just want to have a nice, simple wine. And that's what Rabble was for me. It is $18 and it is so easy drinking. I almost felt like I was drinking juice. And that was the bottle that I decided to finish off the first night I was doing all of these tastings because I took a of it and I was like damn I like this I like the price point the label's really cool it's like a VR thing if you download the app the label comes to life so it's pretty cool the next wine we are drinking is back in Provence and the adjective I gave it was classic we are having Anglaise Rosé and I think this is a really classic representation of rosé from the Provence region it is pale it is dry it is made with Grenache it has those citrusy notes a lot of lemon grapefruit it has a little bit of the herbs that you get if you've ever been to Provence there are just fields of rosé rosemary and lavender growing along the side of the road and all that imparts itself into the grapes so you get a little bit of that and it just has that really great minerality because it's so close to the sea as well i think this is just like a straight up classic provence style rosé and it has the glass stopper which i showed you on my instagram that you just take the butter knife and pop off Next, we have Grand Mornier Rosé. This one comes in at about 30-ish dollars, which is on the higher end of what I like to spend for rosé, but it's totally worth it. We're in the Willamette Valley in Oregon. This is also a Pinot Noir-based rosé, just like we had in Germany. And Oregon is known for their Pinot Noirs. And the adjective I give Grand Mornier is clean. It's a very clean, simple rosé. You have a lot of the red fruits coming through. You get a little bit of like herb floral note on the back, but it's really just like a clean, tasting rosé and I really enjoy it. Next, we are back in Paso and we are drinking a wine from Eberly and it's actually very cleverly named Cote du Roble. Instead of Cote du Rhone, it's made with a similar grape composition that you would find in the Rhone. It has some Viognier in it, so it's a little bit of white wine, which we traditionally do not find in rosé. I was getting a lot of like passion fruit, guava, like a lot of these tropical notes that I wasn't expecting to get in a rosé. Um, a lot of herbs there, a lot of rosemary, maybe a little violet. It was a really interesting and like complex wine wine and I was not expecting it but I totally loved it so the adjective this wine gets was complex slash unexpected it got two 
because I couldn't decide. Next, we have my favorite rosé that I've had this season so far. Um, I don't have any cute B-roll of it like you saw for all these other bottles because I consumed it way too quickly and it was before I even started my tastings and I was like, I cannot not add this because it's so good. But that is the Clos Duval Rosé. So we are in Napa, California and the Clos Duval Rosé is so good. It's also based out of Pinot Noir and it is just like juicy and easy to drink and simple but complex. I don't know. It's just one of my favorite rosés. Every time I open it up, it is just gone in a second. I, I teeter between liking these super, super acidic rosés that are very mineral driven and citrus driven like you get in Provence and they're almost like water colored. They're so pale. And then I also really gravitate towards these like juicy, fruity, more mellow kind of rosés and that's what the Clos Duval does for me. And I gave it the adjective of tradition because Clos Duval has been around for a really long time based in Napa and I just think that they make consistently good wines across the board and this rosé is no exception. And the last one on the list is actually a really funky natural wine which if you know me, I really never talk about natural wines because I personally don't like natural wines. Uh, but two of them made the list this year, which is kind of crazy. Thanks, Phil. I actually just tasted it before we started this video, so it's right here. But this is the Halcyon Days Gris Noir from Hawke's Bay, New Zealand, rosé wine. Um, it's 12% and it's actually a really funky, like deep copper salmon-y color here. I would almost say it's an orange wine, but um, they're classifying it as a rosé. And this is everything you would want in a natural wine. You get a little bit of the barnyard, you know, a little bit of that horse, but it's like really nicely integrated. That funk is there, but it's it's got fruit still, right? So we have, I'm getting a lot of like orange tangerine like a watermelon, like a tarragon. And you do get a little bit of that funk, the acid still there, lots of acid. It brings everything to life, kind of mellows out the funk, and it makes it a really fun drinkable wine. Like this one is getting labeled experimental um, because when I was talking to people at the wine shop when I got this, she told me that this winemaker just like throws whatever he wants, does whatever he wants. If it comes out good, cool. If not, he dumps it and keeps moving on. And I kind of really respect that just fun that he's having with wine, you know? He's just doing what he wants and coming up with something. And he came up with something that's pretty rad and I really like it. And this one, I think was in like the 30s. I don't really remember. It was a little bit more expensive as well, but it was really awesome if you guys want to try a cool natural wine. Okay, my honorable mentions for still wines. There are a few. So I want to give an honorable mention to Joyride from Tank Garage Winery. This wine is 30 bucks. It is absolutely delicious. I would have put it in my top 10, but it is currently sold out and I felt like it was not right of me to include a wine that was sold out in my top 10 because you couldn't get it. So they get an honorable mention. If you guys get any other rosés from Tank, I guarantee they're gonna be delicious. I've not had a wine I haven't enjoyed from them. So definitely pick one up, but honorable mention to you, Tank Garage Winery. Love you guys. Honorable mention also goes to two classic rosés that I pick up every single year. Uh, just the Cote de Rosé from Gerard Breton. It has the really cool rose on the bottom. Everyone knows that bottle. And I think that is a super classic, affordable, delicious rosé from Provence. The bottle is a talking piece in itself and it's one of the first rosés I ever had, so A+. Plus. Same also goes to Summer in a Bottle. Again, we're going back out to the Hamptons local. Um, we're on the South Fork and we are having the Summer Summer in a Bottle from Wolfer Estate, a classic bottle as well. It's beautifully decorated. Wolfer Estate also makes a really great rosé out of Argentina as well, which I love. Um, so if you get either of those, you're in good hands. Okay, let's move on to sparkling. We only have three sparkling to talk about. I tasted, I think, 10 sparklings. It was really, really hard to narrow it down to three, but, but I did. It was hard work, but someone had to do it. So coming in number one, I picked one rosé champagne because I know a lot of people requested affordability on this list. So I tried to only pick one rosé champagne or else that would have taken over my top three. But I went with my classic Laurent Perrier Cuvée Rosé. It is my favorite rosé champagne. Um, it's just always so good. You can get it for 80 bucks on wine.com and it actually comes with this really cool tiger cage um, for like a little bit more, I think. And they have that on wine.com as well. Next up, we have uh, the Camille Braun. This is a Cremant d'Alsace. 
So a Cromont is a sparkling wine made in France in the same method that champagne is, so the traditional method, but it's not made in champagne, so we can't call it that. So we call it Cremant instead. And you can get Cremants from Alsace, from Bordeaux, from Burgundy, um, from the Loire. You can get them from anywhere in France. Alsace is a region I usually gravitate for when going for Cremants. I think they make some of the best. So this one is from Alsace and it is delicious. It has like a coppery color and it's just, amazing and half the price that you would pay for something in champagne next up we have mianetto's rosé i think this is a really fun rosé to drink it is really affordable which is a plus it's technically not prosecco because it's not made of the gira grape so it's not can't be classified as Prosecco by the rules. So it is from Mianetto, but it's not a rose, Prosecco rosé. It's just a sparkling rosé that they make with a combination of a bunch of different red grapes. And it does have about 14 to 17 grams of sugar in it. So a little bit sweeter, but some people really enjoy that little bit of sweetness on their palate. So this would be something that you could have with like the cake or the fruit cocktail. I also really like that just for the affordability. I love Mianetto as a brand and they make cute little ones like you just saw in the video. Little baby ones, they're so cute. Okay guys, so that is all of that. That is 10 still rosés, three sparkling rosés, a few honorable mentions in there. I think we had like three or four. I also have a blog post. If you go into the comments of this video, you can click the blog post. It'll take you to a list of all the rosés, links where you can buy them and their price points. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you guys on my next video. Thanks for tuning in, bye.